What if we told you that the secret to leveling up your IO score only required you to master one concept? You see, a lot of players get caught up in thinking they need god tier damage or mechanics to start pushing higher keys. And of course, these things help, but what truly carries is being proactive, which you can do in a few different ways. We sat down with Stove after his MDI practice, and together we analyzed gameplay from the community to find the biggest mistakes ranged DPS are making in Season 3 with the goal of making sure you can avoid all of them in your next run. But first, do you want to get personalized advice from an MDI player? If so, we have something just for you. For a limited time, Skullcap members can now get free monthly VOD reviews as part of their premium subscription. Your gameplay will be analyzed by an expert player who can provide you with custom advice for a wide range of topics. And when all this is combined with our world-class courses, we guarantee that you can achieve your goals, no matter what class you play. We're so confident our service works that we even offer a rank up guarantee. We promise that you will gain at least 500 IO score while using our guides. So after this video, visit the link below with an exclusive discount code to sign up for skillcap.com today. Anyways, back to the video. The most common mistake we found was range DPS failing to pre-position for pulls. Once you learn how to fix this issue, you will feel way less frustrated and can even deal more damage. To understand how this works, let's start with a familiar experience. You're in the middle of a dungeon and your tank is pulling trash in every direction. You stop to cast and then before you know it, your tank has moved again. And then you realize your tank isn't going to stop pressing the W key, causing you to interrupt your own casts in order to keep up. This can be incredibly frustrating. If packs are spaced far apart, then you will need to move a lot. But instead of chasing your tank around, you should instead think of where the pole will be grouped and pre-position there instead. This concept of proactive positioning is so important that it's even part of our ranged DPS course, where we showcase the first pull in Brackenhide from Season 2, and how Mera's maximized his DPS on Shadow Priest by proactively positioning his character in a location where he knows the tank will be moving to, rather than chasing them all across the dungeon, which is what we saw lower rated players do all the time. This season, the first pull of Thrones of Tides is a perfect example where this type of proactive positioning can make your life so much easier. Notice here that instead of stopping to cast on these initial mobs, Shele continues to press the W key with his group, knowing that his tank will continue the pull deep into the hallway. Once the pull is nearly set, only then does he stop to cast, leaving him in a much better position to start his damage sequence without any risk of interruption. We can see Stove do something a bit more extreme in Darkheart Thicket, using his prowl to position himself in front of his tank so that during the chain pulling process, he isn't stuck behind and is instead in a position to start damaging both packs without much delay, something that is key as a boomkin since you have to ramp your damage in advance. So if it wasn't obvious by now, instead of chasing your tank around, try and visualize where the packs will be grouped and position there instead. While it might seem you are losing some damage, weave in as many instant globals as possible before planting your feet, and that way you won't be interrupting yourself later by chasing your tank like a dog on its leash. Sticking on theme, the second mistake we found was players not planning their globals around force movement. There are multiple boss mechanics where you have to move no matter what, which means planning your globals in advance so you don't interrupt your casts. Let's look at an extreme example here, where this mage is on Eridicron, who is currently channeling Earth Surge. During this time, a lot of movement is required, which means right now is probably the worst time to start channeling a Ray of Frost. And what do you know, our mage is forced to interrupt their own cast just to move, losing out on some damage in the process. This wasn't even the worst example we've seen, and in fact, we're guessing you have seen players try and greet out casts and die in the most hilarious ways possible. But once again, the solution is to be proactive. Here we are following Stove on the same boss as the mage from before, where lots of movement will be needed. Not only is he positioned further back, limiting the amount of time he needs to move, but every time he does move, he weaves in an instant cast global. And not only that, he is also saving his full moon until the end of this phase, where he will actually have the time to cast without any interruption. So on top of being proactive with positioning with your tank on pulls, you also need to be proactive with positioning on bosses, while thinking ahead of when movements will be needed, so you can weave instant cast globals into your rotation to maximize DPS. The next mistake is universal on every roll, and it's not being proactive with defensive cooldowns. Now the reason this is such an important issue for many ranged classes is simply because you are designed to be squishy. Well, most of you anyway. But first, let's think of some basic cooldown logic. Most defensive cooldowns are split into two categories, 
On one side, we have damage mitigation, which includes any ability that reduces incoming damage you will take. On the other side are damage recovery cooldowns, which will help you recover from damage you have already taken. The only way to get value out of damage mitigation is to use them before any damage happens, and the lower damage reduction they provide, the higher you have to use them on HP, especially if you are playing a squishy spec. This is super important since proactive defensives are absolutely needed for this season's bosses. On Yasma, both Soulrend and Racking Pain are not mitigated by avoidance. But watch here as this Warlock is getting targeted by the boss, while missing HP and has cooldowns available. This seems like an obvious trade, but instead they tank the hit leaving themselves with a massive ticking dot at low HP, only to die a few seconds later pressing wall at 1%, not exactly efficient when a simple proactive trade was immediately available. This is a universal mistake, and if you want to push higher keys, you cannot be greedy with your defensives. Considering that almost every single defensive CD is off the global cooldown, you suffer minimal DPS loss from trading into big damage. This is why players like Stowe trade proactively, since not only is it required at the highest key level, but it is also just good general gameplay, prioritizing group stability over seeing slightly higher numbers on details. In lower keys, you might be able to get away with not trading, but even if you can live a big damage event, doesn't mean you should hold on to your defensives, especially in pugs where you might be relying on an inexperienced healer to keep you alive. It's always better to be biased towards caution no matter what, and by doing so, you can train yourself to survive bigger damage in higher key levels. Sticking on theme, our next mistake is also related to being proactive, but this time it's how and when you decide to use your stops. There are plenty of pulls this season where normal interrupts do not work, and you need to be ready to stop a cast with hard CC, like these shield bearers in Atal Dazar who channel Bulwark of Juju. Notice how our mage is in a position to stop with Dragon's Breath, but somehow it is currently on CD. Let's rewind the clip to see what happened. Ah, here we go. Right before a hard stop was needed, our mage decided to use DB just to get a Pyroblast proc which meant going into the next few packs, their only available stop would be down for the next 45 seconds. Let's compare that to Stove, who is also in a Tal Dazar on a slightly different route. But notice how he not only pre-positioned to stop Bulwark with his roar, but he entered this pull, making sure his stop would be ready. In order to make sure you are ready for upcoming stops, you should be actively glancing at the Mara's dungeon weak aura to see when abilities are coming off cooldown. That way, you won't ever be caught off guard. This is a good habit to develop as a ranged DPS, especially the season where AoE stops are needed. As good practice, you should be ready to proactively position near melee range in order to stop like we see Stove doing here. That way, you can be immediately ready to stop important casts on demand. In fact, one key difference between low rated and high rated players is how they position on pulls. Notice here that this ranged player is positioned well out of melee range which means if they needed to stop a cast on demand, not only would it require them to sacrifice more DPS to move, but it could also be defensively risky if playing with some healers, who rely on their group to be positioned near each other in order to maximize HPS. At this point, it should be clear that being proactive is a huge part of playing as ranged DPS. And to complete our list of proactive skills, we need to talk about one more topic with enormous carry potential and how being proactive with utility is a must as a ranged DPS if you want to climb. If you're wondering why mages are everywhere on the leaderboards, but are massive liabilities in lower keys, there are a few explanations. One of them being Mass Barrier, which is one of the best utility spells this season, and is critical for surviving this season's one-shots. Group utility isn't just limited to Mass Barrier, and in fact, there is always something you can do to help out your healer. Like if you play Boomkin, Ellie Shaman, or Shadow Priest, you should be proactive with your passive off healing. Since Nature's Vigil is half the cooldown of Incarn, you can press it once during your main cooldown window and then a second time during a Pulsar proc, which will allow the third press to line up with Incarn once again. As an Ellie Shaman, you don't really have major telegraph cooldown windows, which means you can be flexible when using Ancestral Guidance, using it during times where you know your group will be taking increased damage and given their possible resurgence, Shadow Priest will benefit from syncing up Vampiric Embrace with Void Form or Power Infusion, once again to increase group stability during key moments. In general, it's just good to be aware of what's happening to your group. Even a simple off-heal like Emerald Blossom can be a small nudge to help out your healer when you know your group will be taking damage. And if you are one of the classes with a Curse, Poison, Disease, or Bleed Dispel, then you should actively be using it too. 
The Stingers and Everbloom can do quite a bit of damage, and a quick poison removal is more important than you think. Even though it might cost you one global of damage, it might cost your healer multiple globals to recover, which means they will need to sacrifice more of their damage globals in the process. So if you want to climb as a ranged DPS, you should adopt a strict proactive mindset. There is a reason why players like Stove can climb to high ratings, and it's because they value group stability over everything else, which requires you to think ahead and play with group stability in mind. But if you're still feeling stuck or you just can't rank up no matter how hard you try, then Skillcapped is the solution you've been looking for. There you can learn more tips in our ranged DPS mechanics course that go hand in hand with our class specific damage guides that teach you simple tricks and tell you what mistakes to avoid if you want to master your spec in Season 3. And if you are still unsure, don't worry as you can try out Skillcapped completely risk free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you get your money back, no questions asked. You can unlock this game changing opportunity right now through the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to get the rank you've always wanted. Alright, that's it for today's video. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.